The science and technology within the Pokemon world is far more advanced than anything we have here on Earth. The scientists in the Pokemon world have found ways to store biological data in light, teleport Pokemon around the world, time travel, resurrect fossils and even cloning. So let's take a look at each of the most important tech in the Pokemon world and see how realistic it really is. I think a good starting point with this is the most well-known piece of Pokemon tech, the Pokeball. The Pokeball has the ability to convert the Pokemon's biological data into light to be stored within it. One key aspect of the Pokeball is that they are all more effective on a weakened Pokemon. While this is never explained in any medium, it is shown though that it's possible for Pokemon to fight against the Pokeball, so it can be assumed that when weakened they are just tired and struggle out of capture. Despite being seemingly the most advanced and impressive piece of technology in the Pokemon world, it's actually a very old piece of kit. Over 700 years before the present day, people would have made homemade Pokeballs out of apricots. It's never mentioned exactly how they were able to achieve this. The fact that Pokeballs are over 700 years old is probably why they are sold so cheaply and readily available. Modern Pokeballs can't be expensive as people such as Kurt and Johto are still making apricot balls and a high price of Pokeballs would see less people buy them and instead go back to the old method. Linking into Pokeballs, we can look at the PCs. The PCs seem to be like the ones we have in our world. They can browse the internet, store files, video call, and even send or receive data. However though, even the Pokemon can be sent over PCs from one location to another, thanks to the previously mentioned Pokeballs. As we did say though, the Pokeball is essentially just a big round hard drive that stores the Pokemon's data. And much like a normal hard drive, you can plug this into the computer and then send the data from one place to another, such as Oak's Lab, to another location, such as Ash's. However, the major difference between their world and ours is that the actual physical Pokeball gets sent, not the electronic data. This shows us that the Pokemon world has some form of teleportation to allow for instant data transportation. It's possible this was learned by studying psychic Pokemon such as Abra, whose signature ability is being able to teleport. Pokemon World even has the ability to teleport humans. You can see this inside the games in such places as the Silphco where they have warp tiles that will instantly take you to another floor of the building. It is unknown why this tech isn't used as a wide mode of transportation though. On a side note to this though, Bill, the scientist who is responsible for the PC and teleporting tech within the Pokemon World, actually managed to turn himself into a Pokemon while testing teleportation out. Perhaps these dangers are why it is not a mass mode of transportation just yet. Actually we should take a look at transport as it doesn't differ too much from the real world. Pokemon World seems to have the same methods we do with things such as bikes, planes, boats and cars all being seen readily available within the Pokemon World. The only major difference is that they are able to fly on the back of some Pokemon while we can only ride land based animals such as horses. Ok so let's get back to the points I made at the start of the video and look at time travel. This isn't something that many Pokemon fans will be aware of but it does exist and has been shown in both the games and the manga. The time capsule was available in Gen 2 games of Gold, Silver and Crystal and it allowed the user to send their Pokemon back in time to the Generation 1 games. This naturally did have some restrictions though, the only Gen 1 Pokemon could go back and they could only have moves available in Gen 1. Anything that was related to Gen 2 would not be sent back at all. In the manga, it is mentioned only once, when the previously mentioned Bill says he used it to send Pikachu back in time in order to help locate a legendary Pokemon. One of the most impressive pieces of technology present within the Pokemon world is the ability to resurrect fossils. The general consensus is that all fossils can be restored, but they are so rare to come across that not many people have a fossil Pokemon. The scientists at Devoncorp and the scientists on Cinnabar Island both came up with the ways of reviving fossils around the same time, but they did it independently from each other. The method that both use is currently unknown, however there is also a third way to revive Pokemon that has been developed by a scientist called Kara Liss who is found in the Gala region. Her method is also unknown, but she is able to mix and match fossil halves to create new Pokemon. This marks one of the only times a Pokemon has been created directly from human interference. The final piece of technology I want to look at is cloning. Cloning seems to only be achieved by Mewtwo. You see, Mewtwo was made when scientists were trying to recreate Mew from data that had been found within an old Amber and doing this they kept making multiple clones, and one of them clones was Mewtwo. This Mewtwo broke out of the lab and ran to its own island where it created a special kind of Pokeball that is able to capture and clone any Pokemon. The difference is though these clones do get big black marks on them. It is unknown why only Mewtwo is able to do this and why the scientists in the lab were having issues with it. However, it is quite surprising that cloning isn't a big thing in the Pokemon world as, despite them being seemingly thousands of years ahead of us, we actually do have the ability to clone since we have cloned animals successfully such as sheep. Well that is the end of today's video, I do hope you all enjoyed it, if you did do remember to give it a like, a comment and a subscribe as all of that is a massive help to me growing this channel and providing you with even better content and I will see you all on the next one.